In this video, we're going to do a very straightforward exercise that uses an implicit intent. Or, if you prefer, we're going to see how to toggle the camera and get back a thumbnail of what the camera showed. So, I'll show you a, kind of a preview using the production version of the Plant Places application. When I go to search by color, you see that this screen comes up and we have a button where we can open images from the image gallery. We have another button that will toggle the camera. And so, toggle the camera, take a photo, now watch carefully, you see I have a check, an X, or a go back. Uh, so these are going to give us different behaviors, and we're going to get a different signal based on whether the user checked or the user canceled. Let me go ahead and check, and then what you're going to see is a thumbnail of the image up above. So we're going to do that, but we're going to do it with our own application. And let's get started with the layout. So I'm going to go to Content Color Capture, and again, we're going to make this just very straightforward as much as we can. Just a moment as I remove a few distractions here. And okay, so we start with the constraint layout. So let me start by grabbing an image view. So we'll say image. Probably easiest way is to grab it like so. Grab the image view. And uh, okay, we just need to put some kind of dummy image in there, so we'll do the little um, uh, Android head. Okay, now since it's a constraint layout, I'm going to tie it to the top. And I'm also going to tie it to the sides as well. Uh, it's going to give a kind of funny look and feel there, but, but that will work for us for this moment. Actually, I guess I could do a match, match constraint, but we'll just leave it like so. That'll be fine. Okay, underneath this, I need to add a couple of buttons. We'll make them image buttons so that we can put images on them in a moment. So I grab an image button. And for this one, I'll tell you what, we can just reuse that camera icon because we're going to be taking a photo. So another good reason why we like to put images on our buttons. I can strain him to the bottom of the image view here. And we'll be done with the UI in just a few moments, by the way. We'll be right into the action in just a few moments. So an image button for the take a photo. And then we'll make one more image button and we'll make that for uh, open a photo from the gallery. Once again, we can reuse an icon I've already made for that. It's going to be a little tricky to get these to finagle side by side. So I'm just going to drop them into, uh, let's see, I will tell you what probably easier to do in the editor over uh, the component tree to the left. I'm going to drop them into a linear layout. That will give them kind of a nice even size. And then I can take that linear layout and we can just create a connection to the bottom of this image view to kind of line things up nicely there. A um, couple more things I can, I'm going to tweak just a couple of other things. First of all, uh, okay, those look good. That looks good. I'm going to rename this to IMG. Let's just make it IMG thumbnail. Rename these things when you're thinking about it because trust me, uh, image button two is not going to make any sense. We'll say BTN open image or open gallery. And then the other one we will call uh, BTN take photo. Now remember that BTN take photo. I'm going to remember that. I'm going to save and now we're going to roll up our sleeves and start getting to work on this guy. So I go to color capture activity and let's remember that I'm using butter knife. So with butter knife it's easy to create a click handler. I can simply make a method public void take button photo uh, take BT and take photo clicked, open and close paren, open curly, close curly. Now the butter knife part is where the magic comes in. We remember from a previous video, all we need is this on click annotation. And yep, butter knife on click, that's good. Now we need to tell it which button is going to be using this method as an event handler. Remember we called it BTN take photo, uh, BTN take photo. Remember how I just said to rename those variable names on your layout as soon as you as soon as you add them? This is why, because BT and take photo is easier to remember than button one, button two, button three, something like that. Now it's coming up red. It didn't find it. What I will typically do in this case is just kind of give it a nudge to rebuild because when it builds, it creates these constants, uh, constants that represent widgets on the screen itself. Let's give this just a moment to build. After a build, take a look. It's no longer red. It's now purple. If yours is still red after a build, just make sure that everything matches exactly this ID up here, BTN take photo. And by exactly, I mean no spaces. Uh, also pay attention to capitalization and spelling. As long as you have that right, uh, it should figure out this constant, this r.id.btn take photo. It should figure that out the next time it compiles. Okay, great. So when we click the photo button, this guy right here on our application, 
it's going to come to this on click method. So this is where we can uh, bring up the camera. As a matter of fact, I can put a bit of uh, Javadoc here and just say, uh, show the camera when clicked, something like that. Okay, uh, so we always wanna put Javadoc ab above a public method. Okay, so what I'm going to do, the, invoking the camera is quite simple. Intent, intent equals new intent. Okay, careful on one thing though. Remember that we're invoking something that is external to our program. So we need to use an implicit intent, not an explicit intent. In other words, an explicit intent looks like this. We have the keyword this, and then we have the activity that we want to invoke with this intent. With an implicit intent, we don't need the keyword this. We just need a string here that says what we want to do. In this case, we want to toggle the camera. And that happens to be wrapped up in a string that's stored in a variable. That variable is media store dot action image capture. So while this looks more complicated than it is, if I double click on this, let's see if I have source code attached. Yeah, if I mouse over, take a look at what appears. This is going into the source code of that media store class or interface, and it's showing us that action image capture is just a string, and that string resolves to android.media.action.imageCapture. That's it, and that says I want to take a photo. Okay, now we have to call start activity for result. Okay, and for this we, we have to pass in several options. First, the intent that we want to use to start our activity, and then a request code. And what's a request code? A request code is a fingerprint. We're going to call start activity for result. Start activity for result is going to invoke the camera. Once it invokes the camera, the user is going to take a picture. That picture needs to go somewhere, doesn't it? Well, it goes to a special method called onActivityResult. OnActivityResult needs some kind of unique identifier that says what we're hearing back from. What we're doing now is we're creating that unique identifier. It just needs to be a number, any old number will do. Uh, we could go with 1997, that number will work, any good number will work. But note at this point I have what's called a magic number. It's a number sitting in my source code without any description. It's just 1997, that's it. It's better to make this a constant. In Android Studio, that's very easy. Put your cursor on the number, uh, control alt C, and now we can call this camera request code. Do you see what's going on here is look at, look at what's up here. It's going to declare a constant for us, a public static final int camera request code. It's gonna set that constant equal to this number 1997. When I hit enter, the number 1997 is gone and instead, we have something else here, which is uh, this variable, or rather this constant, called camera request code. Now, why did I go through all that trouble? Number one, we don't like magic numbers. Number two, don't you think the code's a little bit more readable now, uh, now that I have camera request code here instead of 1997, even though the same value is getting passed either way? It's gonna make even more sense in just a moment. So let's make this method on activity result and take a look at what gets passed to on activity result. A request code, remember that? There's our camera request code. A result code. The result code says, did the user choose okay or cancel? And then finally, any data that's coming back, and in our case, that's going to contain our thumbnail image that the camera acquired. Okay, so let's start this way. If result code equal equal uh, result, underscore okay. Do you see the options here? Canceled and okay. Result okay. Oh, and I miscapitalized that. This is very common. On activity result, remember, can be called from many different places. So many times what we'll do is we'll handle the happy path, result okay, in one if block, and then the unhappy path, the canceled path, in an else part to that if block. Not worried about the cancel just yet because all we're doing is getting a thumbnail. Let's go ahead and leave this as is if result code equals result okay. Now, are we hearing back from the camera? And that might seem like, well, no, duh, of course we are because we just called the camera up above. Well, remember what this screen looks like. Remember that we can either toggle the camera or the image gallery. Uh, 
Both of these, whichever one we press, is eventually going to come back to on activity result. And so we'll need to know the request code of the sender to know whether we're hearing back from the camera or the image gallery or anything else that's going to essentially be a callback. So I'll say if uh, request code equal equal camera request code. If we are here, we are hearing back from the camera. Okay, and I'll put another comment up here. If we are here, the user selected okay. So just kind of a little map of where we are. Now, real, real quick, I want to give an, a real life analogy of what we see here with BTN take photo clicked, start activity for result, and on activity result. Think back to how you would get tickets for a show before the internet. I know that sounds really weird, but nowadays you just go online and buy a ticket, right? How did you buy a ticket for The Price is Right if you were in Cincinnati and The Price is Right, price is right was in Los Angeles? Back when I was a young man, uh, actually a boy, uh, watching The Price is Right on summer break, it always ended with, uh, for tickets to see The Price is Right, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to some address in Hollywood, California. Now, what's a self-addressed stamped envelope? It means you would take an envelope, put your name on it, address it, put a stamp on it, fold it up, put it into another envelope, and mail it to this address in Hollywood. What would they do in Hollywood? They'd open the envelope that you mailed, they'd find the envelope that has your address on it, put a couple tickets in it, and then drop that in the mailbox. So self-addressed stamped envelope. You don't really hear, hear that as much as you used to, but that used to be very common. That's essentially what we're doing here. Here, we're sending our request for tickets to The Price is Right. This is our self-addressed stamped envelope. The Price is Right gets our tickets and it mails it back to us. And when we receive it, we see, oh yeah, my Price is Right tickets. But where are the tickets? Well, the tickets themselves are in this last component called data. And I'll warn you, this part gets a little bit tricky. It's fairly boilerplate, but it's not something you're gonna memorize. So data dot get extras. So show me what's in the envelope, dot get data. It's that last part that I find a little bit tricky. We're going for a thumbnail and the thumbnail happens to be called data. Now I put my cursor on get and Android Studio, control alt V will assign this to a variable. I'm gonna call the variable returned object. Now even worse, look at the variable type. The variable type is capital O object, which is one of the most generic types that we can have. It has very few methods on it. For example, return object, if I press a dot here, not a whole lot of methods, just uh, about eight, nine, or 10 that come with every single Java object. So we need something more specific. So we need to do a cast, and again, this is ugly, I know, but it's how it works. If returned object instance of bitmap. By the way, if you know a better way to do this, please put it in the comments, I'd love to know. Uh, so far, this is the best way I've found. If returned object instance of bitmap, okay, what does that mean? That means this guy right here, is it really a high level object? Or under the covers is the object type a bitmap? Remember polymorphism, variable type, which is object, tells us what methods we're allowed to call. But the object type tells us what will happen when we call those methods. Right now, we have a very high level variable type that has very few methods on it. What we're doing is we're saying, is the object type actually a bitmap? Because if it is, I'm going to cast this variable from the very high object type down to a very specific bitmap type, and that will give me more methods I can call. So if we're in, if we're here, the object actually is a bitmap safe to cast. Casting in general, something we're getting away from in programming. Uh, in my early days, you cast it all the time. It was very dangerous. It could cause a class cast exception and kill your program. Now we have alternatives like generics that make it easier to prevent casting. But nonetheless, there we go. The object is actually a bitmap safe to cast. So I'm going to say bitmap bmp image equals bitmap returned object. So notice that I have a brand new variable called bmp image, and I'm just assigning this returned object to it, but I'm casting it first. One more line to go. What was that name of our, well, actually a couple more lines. What was the name of our image view? I think we called it, uh, what was this guy up here? We called it IMG thumbnail. Was that it? Yeah. 
And if I go to text, I can see this is an image view. Okay, let's remember a bit of our butter knife magic. So I go up to the type, remember this bind view thing that we have, I'm just going to borrow the syntax. Oh, sorry, going to a different file here. This is GPS a plant, which we did in an earlier video. I'm going to take that. I'm going to go to my color capture activity right after the constant. Notice that, sorry, let me dismiss this. Go ahead and do the import. Notice this constant, which we generated earlier with control alt C. So bind view, I'm going to say image view and then IMG thumbnail. I don't have to give it the same name as I have in the layout, but just to keep things straight in my head, I often do. That's just my personal preference. Okay, Android widget image view. Yep, Alt Enter, that's the guy we want. And with butter knife and this annotation, it now knows that this IMG thumbnail is this guy we have at the top right here. So same is the same. Okay, great. So one more thing then. Down here we need to say IMG thumbnail, and then we're going to say set image bitmap and BMP image. Now you know there's always just one more thing, right? I do still need, since I am using the uh, butter knife, I do still need to bind it. So I'll go back to our example from earlier, the GPS of plan screen, and I simply need to add this one line. We can do it after, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it right up here. So I simply need to add this butter knife dot bind and then this to my onCreate method that, that makes all this butter knife magic happen. So we'll save. And I notice I did make one mistake. Instead of binding to ACT plant name, it should be IMG thumbnail. Looks like that was just a copy and paste error. With that, we're all good. And so I'm going to snap a breakpoint in on activity result, uh, take photo clicked, and also in the onCreate method. And let's take a look. Starting with the front screen of the app, I click search by color. You see the breakpoint hits for on create. I'll go ahead and choose F9 and let that continue. Uh, now I'm going to click the photo button. And by the way, I'm going to reverse these buttons after this video, just because in the production plant places, the photo comes first and then the image gallery last. But nonetheless, you see it has kind of the dummy thumbnail image. And our success criteria here is that that gets replaced with whatever the camera takes as a photo. So speaking of which, I click this photo button and you see that the uh, breakpoint right now is in the on take photo clicks. So sure enough, our butter knife magic worked. I choose F8. I'll go ahead and choose F9 for this. We go back. It renders the camera. Uh, this is the camera emulator. I take a photo. I click the checkbox and watch what happens next. You see the breakpoint stops on on activity result. So we walk through this. We see that the result code is OK. The request code for the camera is 1997, the number I made up. We get our object back. We confirm it's a bitmap. And whoop, just one moment. And after that, then we simply set the bitmap as the background to that image view. Let me take off the breakpoints and we'll do it one more time. But uh, I'll go ahead and let this one play through so we can get satisfactory results. Maybe a bit difficult to see in the video, but sure enough, right there uh, is a, a thumbnail image. So let's do that one more time from the top without breakpoints. Search by color, click the photo, get the camera to come up, take a photo, OK, and then we're back. We got the thumbnail and we're showing the thumbnail in our view. So in this video, we showed how to invoke the camera with an implicit intent, one of the most simple implicit intents, and that is just action image capture. But on top of that, we saw the self-address stamped envelope of on activity result. And that's something we're going to see even more of as we continue to go through videos in this course. So I hope this video has been helpful. I know the previous image capture videos I've done have been very popular. So if it worked for you, if you have any better ideas, I'd love to hear about it. Please let me know in the comments. Thank you.